my gosh, this place is hopping. Ah, there she is. Lisa? Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's right in the middle. Can Hi. you go for a ride with us? Are you ready? Oh, sure. Let me just leave the kitchen. I'll be right there. I need time for you. I can do this. Your chariot awaits. Oh, thank Allow you. me. Oh, got to treat what mother an honor. right. Wow. I'm so in. glad you're here. Do you have a favorite mother food that you make? Um, well, of course, Jewish mother food, you know. You know, on the menu is Jewish penicillin, my mother's matzo ball soup, and there's chopped liver always on the menu. So tell me about your relationship with your mother. How did she influence you? Well, my mother was a great cook. She had a restaurant before I was born, which she sold when she met my father, and so she could raise me. So she was an excellent cook, and that is definitely in my blood. She was a perfectionist, that's definitely in my blood, and a doer. She, you know, a Renaissance lady, she did it all, though I can't sew, but I could, I could knit if I had a minute, um, and I used to, but um, I got all that from her. So you mentioned your daughter, Stephanie, mm -hmm. the hiking accident. Yes. My yep. God. When she died, you stepped in to raise the twins, two boys who are now six years old. Does that drive you? You lose a child and there's no reason for living, but Stephanie left four children. Um, one is now 16, the other 14, and then these twin six-year-olds. And so it's not just the twins that keep me going, I have to keep the whole family going. How are the, the wee ones doing? Um, they're doing really great. They are joyful, they're happy. You know, this disaster could have gone so many ways and just showering them with love and attention seems to have done a miracle because these little boys have proven to be resilient and they're doing okay. I love my daughter through loving them. You've done her proud and are doing her proud. I hope so. I hope so. You said that you were 61. Right. You're mothering six-year-olds. Right. What is that schedule like? I mean, your life <laughs> has done a 180. Oh, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night, they sleep over. Every day of the week, uh, but Monday, I take them to school. So I'm getting them ready at 7 in the morning and making their breakfast and making their lunches and taking them to school. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I pick them up from school. My husband gets them Thursdays. I mean, oh we goodness. sign them up for Taekwondo. We're living the life of parents. Yeah. Do you mother differently now? Mothering the twins? I'm so much better than when I was a mother to my daughter. I was so young. I was 21 years old. What did I know? Mm -hmm. I was impatient. Um, I'm so much more patient now. And I realized that we have to listen to the children, listen to them. We don't shut up long enough to hear what they are saying. Tell me about your Mother's Day wish. Do you have one? Mother's Day is a dreaded day for me nowadays. I know oh. I shouldn't say it, but I dread it. It's okay it. to say it. I dread it. You know, I, I have to feed all these mothers and I want them all to be happy, but of course I don't, I'm not a mother and so, and I lost my daughter, so it is probably my worst holiday. And it's so ironic that the woman who owns a restaurant called Mother's is, you know, isn't a mother anymore but uh, yeah <laughs> yeah so it's a very hard day for me very hard. so how will you approach that what do you I do you've acknowledged, and you've and acknowledged I, it yep, and I acknowledge it and I just serve I serve the mothers and I and I am happy for the families that are happy I want everybody to be joyful and enjoy their day so I put aside my needs because I'm here to serve and that's why I do what I do at the restaurant I mean it's not just about me taking care of my children but taking care of everybody's children and taking care of Mother Earth or our community. I don't, this, I wasn't put on this earth to just take care of me. We are here to take care of each other. Mm. And if my fellow man needs something, then I can't look the other way. I can't look the other way. Is there something that you haven't done yet that you want to do? Well, I always thought I wanted to do TV. I always thought I wanted to have a cooking show or whatever. But then the more I found out about the media, the more I realized you really got to be molded into whatever they think that they want you to be. And you can't really be yourself. Just out of curiosity, what did anybody want to change? I would love to hear that executive oh, one, try and do something with well, one who part, you one, are. One talent, one talent guy um, said, well, you know, you'd have to do something about that. And he didn't say it like that, but he meant that Jewish thing. For like he real. didn't say it like that, but that's what he meant. That's what he meant. You've been so transparent and honest and open, but is there something that people would be surprised to learn about you? Hmm. Hmm. No deep, dark secrets? 
Uh, Guilty pleasures? Uh, I don't know if I want it public. <laughs> I don't know if I want it public. Um, Had to ask. <laughs> I love weed. <laughs> Are you open about that? No, uh, oh. not really. <laughs> so you probably don't you want that on carpool? Probably not, uh, probably damn, not, come yeah. on, girl. Um, it's well, legal. I appreciate, I, okay, so let's see. How would we say it? I appreciate <laughs> like a this. good. Um, I appreciate a good uh, doobie now and then. But it's all legal. Is that okay to talk about? Um, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Yes, I think. I mean, I think cannabis is really helpful, and if it's done uh, and used properly, it's uh, it can be very good. It, uh, it helps people in a lot of ways. See, I knew if I talked to you long enough that you would <laughs> tell me something. something. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody I has that it. thing. All right, all right. <laughs> I like weed. <laughs> if we go with the flow, if we open our hearts, if we listen to the messages, if we have an open mind to what is put before us and not just think, well, it's supposed to be this way, but then this happens. If you go with that flow, Things will go as they should. Not only it's not going to always be beautiful and happy, but it's the way it's supposed to be, and you can't fight that. I'm glad that you're Portland's mother. Oh, <laughs> well, I love Portland. Portland. Portland has been very good to me. I'm here to feed all of Portland if I can. <laughs> I love on this community, and love on this city, and um, they love on you back. <laughs> it's um, it's a great place to be.